good evening everyone uh, i'm uh, vijay bora i practice at command hospital central command lucknow um, at the outset i will thank the organizers for giving me an opportunity to present here in front of this august gathering uh, i'll be presenting a case of uh, stepwise debulking in a heavily calcified artery with intravascular imaging my patient a 78 year old gentleman diabetic hypertensive he presented with angina on exertion class 3 intermittently he had also had rest angina you can call his he had uh, un unstable angina. ECG showed ST depression in the inferior leads. Uh, echocardiography revealed hypokinetic inferior uh, inferoceptal wall with a near normal LV function uh, with normal valves. His hematological and biochemical profile was normal. Serum creatinine was around 1.2 milligram per deciliter. Uh, these are the initial diagnostic runs and uh, which showed a normal left main in the AP caudal view, a uh, proximal cutoff of the circumflex and a uh, uh, calcific left anterior descending from the proximal to the distal uh, diffuse disease. And also we can see uh, retrogradely filling uh, circumflex and the uh, RCA, uh, the, the PD uh, being filled in the retrograde injection. The uh, right coronary angiogram in the yellow cranial view shows a diffuse disease from proximal to distal RCA, uh, a tortuous vessel and cut off at the uh, uh, cut off just uh, before the crux, the PLV is also diseased. So, the, so initially we thought um, uh, in the presence of calcific triple vessel disease, uh, in view of uh, he being an allergy gentleman, frail, we thought uh, uh, PAVG would not be a very good option for him right away. So after discussing with the relatives, we thought first we'll tackle the LAD, uh, get our backup, and then look after the RCA. So this is the pre-PCI uh, OCT back of the LAD, which showed uh, 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 heavily calcific um, LAD from um, almost mid to proximal RCA, uh, the uh, calcification being circumferential, deep calcium, more than 500 micromene and more than 5 mm in length. The distal lumen, uh, the, the reference luminal diameter was 5.11 and the uh, minimal uh, luminal area was 1.73 millimeter square. And as we can see, there is a circumferential calcium and uh, 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 which is diffuse. So as we all know that calcium influences stent expansion. This is the, uh, Calcium volume index score given by Fujino et al. and uh, which shows the rules of rule of five. We all know about that. So our patient, uh, the LAD was almost four points. So we, what options do we have? So uh, we do not have a orbita. Uh, we do not have a laser. Nor we have a CTVS backup at our center. So we initially thought uh, this algorithm was already discussed by my previous speaker, and. Uh, we thought that we'll start with the uh, uh, the rotational atherectomy. Calcium also causes suboptimal stent expansion, device delivery failure, increased complication, and increased procedural times. So initially, we started with the LAD rota. I, we took a 1.75 mm bar at 180,000 revolutions per minute. And uh, this is the post-rota ablation. Post-rota ablation, we could see uh, there were some, uh, there was, a, Calcium fracture, there was sanding of calciums of the of, of only the superficial calcium. So we thought uh, we were not getting an adequate uh, thing. Uh, uh, after the uh, second, after the post rota run, we in the OCT, we thought that there was still calcium to break, to be broken. So we took a cutting balloon dilatation catheter of 3 into 15 mm, and uh, then uh, uh, we achieved a 1 is to 1 luminal gain, 1 is to 1. Um, Preparation of the uh, bed and stented with a 3 into 38 mm dust. Post dust deployment, we this was our angiographic result. With the want of time, I'll not be discussing the post PCI OTV. We, we achieved a good position of the LAD stent and also the uh, good stent expansion. Coming to the RC, which is the actual artery which I wanted to discuss, uh, it is tortuous, it is heavily calcific, and I do not see the PD. So what option do I have? So initially I thought I'll wire the, uh, try to wire, get through that 
completely occluded segment, dilate and see if I can do what uh, an eye image. So I initially did serial dilations. The, at the tortuosity in the mid RCA, uh, my balloon was getting stuck. I took a serial dilation with one into 10 uh, semi-compliant and a two into 12 semi-compliant balloon in the mid RCA and the distal RCA after crossing. So after this balloon dilatation, I can see the uh, PD. I was happy. I thought uh, I'll do a uh, rotor run. So I thought um, I'll take a uh, imaging run, but unfortunately, even the uh, OCT imaging catheter was not going. Uh, thereafter, we thought since it, um, it's a uh, uncrossable lesion, I took a rota uh, 1.75 mm bar uh, at 1,80,000 revolutions per minute, gave three runs of rota, and uh, uh, after the rota, uh, this is the imaging run, and as we can see, this is the distal RCA. Uh, you can see because of the uh, dilatations, there are a few um, intimal flaps, and also as we come up, there's calcification. The, this is a uh, area where uh, a bit of calcium is there, but uh, there's no, uh, uh, the, the lumen is, uh, looks good. Uh, coming to the Coming to the main area uh, of cal calcification, as we can see, uh, there is again um, diffuse calcification, and there is also sanding of, with the help of the rota, uh, there is some sanding because of balloon dilatations. There are intimal flaps, and as we can see, there is there is uh, uh, almost 270 degrees uh, calcium uh, arcs which are which are present. At the end, also there is, uh, as we can see, a, a so thereafter, uh, since there was still evidence of um, uh, cal uh, calcifications, which was two six seventy degree, and there was no uh, break break in the in cracks in the calcium, so I took a IVL one is to one preparation with a three point five into twelve m IVL, and again imaged it. It's a, it's a longish run, but uh, as uh, we can see here, there are a lot of uh, cracks in the cal cal calcium and also grazing because of the uh, rota. Uh, there is a lot of sanding and the cracks in the calcium can be seen uh, as we had seen yesterday also, there, uh, the, the interface between the uh, vessel wall and the calcium uh, uh, the uh, uh, deep calcium uh, is the place where the IVL gives uh, maximal calcification. Here, as we can see here, at the interface between the uh, the vessel wall and the calcium module. Uh, this was the luminal gain after the um, rota. Then we stented uh, again. The um, despite this, because of the tortuosity. The uh, the uh, the uh, des uh, the stent was not going in, so I took a guy, uh, body wire, uh, extra extra support wire, and a guide extension, and we could deliver the initially the distal stent, then the proximal stent, and this is the final result. This is the post PCI pullback, where uh, we can could achieve an area of uh, stent expansion of 96 percent all through and. Uh, uh, area of more than of 5.83 millimeter square. This is the uh, last run of the right coronary artery. Here we can see adequately expanded stent. The take home, take home message from my presentation is the imaging first should be the strategy in calcific lesions. However, uh, many a times the imaging catheter may not pass, so uh, we need to dilate it before or do a rota um, prior to that. The plan should be tailor-made for the patient and the coronaries. Therapies for calcific lesions complement each other. In the LAD, we did a rota plus a uh, cutting balloon. And in the second, we did a rota tripsy. And newer therapies like IVL are safe and effective. Thank you very much.